Hey, sweet Maya. Good morning. It's our last morning at our friend's, the Rhodes house. We just woke up. Uh, the kids are in down here before me to help with morning chores. I'm going to milk one more time. I'm feeling much more practiced and prepared for a cow of my own. Um, hands on experience, there's just nothing like it. Good morning, sunshines. <laughs> So their old spot is really close to Farrowing. She's very sweet. You can kind of see underneath here how she's starting to swell right before a pig gives birth. Their milk comes in and they'll be real, real swollen and then they get real swollen in the back. She looks a lot closer this morning than she even did a few days ago whenever we got here. Um, and I think they said she's due next, like next week. So she's getting really close. She's a sweet pig. Hey, handsome. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. So when we leave here, we're going back to South Carolina just as soon as we're done with chores. We're gonna go load our car up and clean up and head on our way. Um, our house is almost ready to move into, so I'm, I'm actually leaving either tomorrow or the next day, I haven't decided yet, to drive back to Arkansas and get my dogs, my cats, and Jackson's lizard. But um, it's been really lovely staying here with the roads. Of course, we announced the premiere of our new t show, Wilder Still, which is going to be uh, premiering this weekend. And I'll link the video, the last video I did, in case you missed it, where we really kind of talked about the process of coming to make that show and why we wanted to do it. But I'll also put a link down below if you want to watch the trailer for it and if you want to sign up for the um, free showing of the episode, the first episode this weekend. But when we came up here, uh, we were grateful for a break and kind of a slowdown just to rest. We did some exploring of Asheville, which is such a cool town. Thank you to those of you who sent me suggestions of places to see and check out. But one of the things we really wanted to like glean coming here was we we wanted to see how they do things just kind of hands-on. Obviously, they're putting videos out for everybody and we have learned a lot from them over the years, but we wanted to come and just kind of put our hands on it, help and see firsthand what these processes look like. And the thing that I am just most amazed by is that it feels like more work when you think about like rotational grazing and moving animals every day. You think that's gonna cause more work. I have to go out there every single day and move those fences, every single day and move those, those shelters and, and get those animals moved. But the thing that I really noted with this is that though you are moving pens, you're not scooping poop. And on a homestead, there's a lot of poop. And so making systems where that works for you, where you're leaving it there in the fields to fertilize the, the fields and grow the grass and build the soil, it's really cool. I've been here this week coming out every morning and thinking, well, this is a lot more enjoyable work to do than the work that is created if you don't do this. So at our new farm, we actually built some permanent fencing. We did want to do a perimeter fence, but it is our plan to put some systems in play where we are moving our animals like this. And I don't know exactly how that'll shape up, but I do know that I can see how beneficial it really is to come out every day, rain or shine, and move those fences and move those animals. Because if you'll notice here, there's not a single place of exhausted grass. There's not a single place of bare soil. It's healthy from these animals just being rotated.
Bye animals, nice to meet ya. Hey guys, it's the next morning. We drove back yesterday from the lovely little good food and rest bubble that was the Rhodes house. And we are now back on our property in South Carolina. It's about two hour drive from their house. We kind of got to work right away. That's what we're doing this morning. We should be moving to our house very soon. We're waiting on the inspection right now, but almost everything's ready. There are a couple things that still have to be finished. Uh, they're on it, they're getting it done, and we'll be able to be in here really soon. Pods are here, Toby. You wanna come say hi to the goats? And look at these happy guys over here, or gals, I should say, one guy. We, Maya, before he came out to Justin and Rebecca's, stayed here, and a friend came and helped, and they, they finished stretching this fence so the goats could have this big pasture right now. And our plan, as soon as we get settled and we just get more of our infrastructure in place, is to start rotating our animals. And we're going to use some electric netting and some different things. We've just been looking at some different options and figuring out how we want to do this. But as of right now, we just put up the perimeter fence. We wanted to have that anyway. Even with rotational grazing, having a good perimeter fence, just make sure that if your animals do get out of the electric netting, they're not gonna end up in your neighbor's yard or in the road, which is good. And right now, we just have our animals in the whole big pasture. We're, we're still gonna have to mow it. 13 goats is not enough, and three alpacas to keep down whatever this is, 13 or 14 acres. Hey, Gabriel, are you living your best life in here, sir? Are you living your best life in here? Are you happy? Oh my goodness. Gracious, you're filthy, you silly boy. Look at all these goaties. Hey girls, hello. I kinda wanna show you all the temporary setup we have here. So one of the things with making a move like we just made, this was a very big move, is that you have to be willing to just be okay with maybe not exactly your end goal in the meantime, maybe not the ideal situation in the meantime. And while I am a big dreamer and I'm always talking to you guys about dreaming big and not being limited and thinking about what you might be able to do. Say you have a farm dream or you've got a business dream or you have a dream for your family. Seeing a dream come to fulfillment means learning to make do. Learning to just stay committed to that dream during the process. And sometimes that requires just doing temporary things in the meantime, just like I said. I see the value of rotational grazing and farming this way. That's my goal. In the meantime, I'm gonna do the best that I can. And I'm okay with that. It's okay for everything to not always be strictly black and white. So one thing I've noticed with my goats having access to so much green is their coats are getting real sleek and shiny, which is good. That's a healthy thing. Hey, ma'am. Hey, girl. Hey, Miriam. They're very happy. That's for sure. So here we have this electric net erected around the back side of the fence and our turkeys are currently in that as well as our chickens. And the chickens will get in the chick shawl there, but they can also go through the cattle panel. So they're kind of wandering around here also. The reason we left that up, even though the chickens were getting out, is one, to keep the turkeys contained, but two, so that we could feed the chickens and the turkeys in that area and the goats couldn't get to their feet because chicken food and turkey food can hurt goats if they eat it. Hey girls. Hello. <laughs> so we split the barn in half in here. And this is a temporary structure. Hey Tori. Hey Tori, you can say hi. Hey Curly, can I have a kiss? She does not like the camera, so I have to put it to the side. Okay, so. Oh, you sweet angel. Y'all, alpacas feel like carpet. I wish you could feel them. You doing it? Oh, that's a sweet baby. So the benefit here of having this barn in half is to keep the chickens food in a place where the big animals can't get to it. And the chickens are just passing through this cattle panel. The turkeys are contained. They're chattering to me. Oh, hey, lovey. 
my Nestle girl giving me snugs. Oh, what a sweet girl. Just a word of advice for those of you maybe keeping chickens and goats on the same property, make sure that you keep your chicken food where your goats cannot get to it. The first goat that I ever lost when we were first getting started, it was a little male. He was a weather and he had come when I got Maggie and he got into the yard with the chickens and he knocked over the can of their feed and it, he ended up getting bloat and we did everything we could to save him and we ended up losing him. It was really sad and we've always been very vigilant since then to make sure that goats cannot get to the chicken food and that's what this setup is for. And really this temporary st structure here is working great right now for what we need. Um, the, the goats have, an, have a pl dry place we can feed them and a place to get out of the weather. The birds have a place to get out of the weather. And then the goats and alpacas have access to this big field over here. And they're just making their way around it. So since getting here, I shared with you guys on the video when we first got here, we lost two chickens in transit. And they were two of the oldest hens that I had. But since then, there have been no losses. Everybody seems to be getting increasingly healthier having this much space, which is really great to see. Um, and so far there haven't been any issues at all. We're really relieved about that. Oh, I have not, I got a new goat I didn't introduce you guys to. Here's Maggie and Miriam, my first two does I ever had. And right here on the right of the fence, this is Honor. And Honor is a Sonnen. Hey girl, hey beauty queen. Hey sweet darling. And Honor is also very, very sweet. Hey baby. So I actually did show you guys this goat before we moved. Um, ben Turn had gotten this herd from a friend of mine and was starting his goat operation. And one of the girls, this girl actually, I was there when she was born, the year that she was born. Um, I had been really hands-on as when my friend still lived around the corner from us. And um, she, she is now four. And these Sonnen's milk a ton. And Ben felt like he had his hands full with four of them. He did not want to have all five. And so I ended up taking her with me. She was the only one that wasn't a purebred Sonnen. She's an American bred. So she's, she's a purebred Sonnen, but there are two classifications of that with the ADGA. And I am planning on getting a cow um, fairly soon, once we have a barn that's not the temporary barn. But in the meantime, I decided to go ahead and bring her with me because she was already ready to be moved. And I thought, why not? What's one more? The other new thing, which doesn't look very impressive in this big space, I got my first load of wood chip mulch. This stuff's actually pretty well broken down, but this little truckload of mulch did make me realize how very much mulch it is that I'm going to need if I'm planning on filling all this space in to make a, you know, my orchard and in-ground gardens and then above-ground gardens. It's going to be quite a lot. This pile would have looked very impressive next to my old garden in my old little space, but in this big old space, whatever I pulled up, I was like, Oh wow, I was like, Maya, we're gonna need like a hundred more loads of mulch at least. He's like, oh no honey, we're gonna need about 300 more. So we're like putting our name on all of the things. There's something called chip drop that you can sign up. We were signed up at our old house. We never got anything, so we were too far out. But here, we might be close enough to things to actually get the drops. Some of our friends have connections. We've talked to them. So if anybody knows anybody that needs a place to dump wood chip mulch, and we're kind of exploring the idea of potentially someday getting a chipper, but right now there are just so many things that are higher on the priority list. All right, so the last little check-in down here. I think I may have the happiest ducks in existence. They're just so glad and just thriving here on the pond, the ducks and the geese. And the mallard that had lived here before has just taken to the flock. It's really sweet.
during this process, I mean, even like more, this morning, I told Maya, I'm like, I really don't feel like I have anything to show. But the reason I continue to turn the camera on, I, I keep getting these messages from you guys saying like, this is my dream and it benefits me to actually see what the process looks like. And at this point in the process, we're just kind of waiting, um, really waiting to sink our teeth in. Uh, we knew that this was gonna feel like limbo. And right now it was the inspection and then the electrical company, just like the local electrical company. We're just waiting on them to come turn our power service on. And then we can move into our house and that will obviously help a lot of things feel settled. And at that point, I mean, I can start buying plants. I did buy, I did buy a house plant yesterday. I was like, Maya, I went nine whole days without owning plants. I did have some cuttings and some different things from our old house my mom was taken care of. So technically I own plants, but I'm not taking care of plants in like almost two weeks. <laughs> and uh, I told him yesterday, this is my foray back into gardening. Um, I'm very excited to start working on some garden spaces. This has felt like a strange little period of in between. I don't have my dog here. I don't have a garden. <laughs> Getting back to a place of being able to really regularly cook and know what to expect. It's just, it's growing. Um, it's, it's slightly uncomfortable, but overall we're just overwhelmed with all of the blessings. So last reminder, please go sign up uh, at the link below to watch the trailer for our new show, Wilder Still. And I also have a coupon code. If you wanna sign up for Abundance Plus, just put in Jess at the checkout and it gets you 10% off. Uh, but you can sign up and watch that first episode for free. We're still gonna be doing YouTube through that process, but we are doing this high production docu-series where we're showing from the starting point the process of our family. We're building this farm from scratch. We're growing our vision and then in years to come, we'll be diving off into the other big things that we're dreaming for our life. And in the meantime, sharing the process with you and the practicing the patience muscle. Over the years of homesteading, I would say the greatest lesson of all that I've taken from it is learning that sometimes um, you just need to act, you just need to be patient. You just need to stop and make the most of the moment, find the beauty in the moment, live to the fullest in the moment. And I know that sounds cliche, cheesy and cliche and some people be like, whatever. But truly, like, you think when you're wanting your farm or you're wanting to be able to experience the fullness of what your dream is, you think when you get there that it's gonna be all of a sudden, oh, it's so fulfilling and, it, and it's not. You're gonna have something else you're gonna have to be patient on. So really just living fully in the moment, being patient, knowing that those good things are coming but that there's so much beauty to experience now. If we hadn't been in this limbo period, we would not have just had this very sweet week at our friend's house. We would not be making some of the memories that we're making right now with our kids. And I would not be yet again in the position of turning my waiting room into a classroom and that's what we're doing and that's the best way I have found to practice your patience much muscle while still scratching the itch to just do something is turn your waiting room into a classroom and here I am again in yet another classroom and I'm so glad to share it with you guys thank you for hanging out with me today I bless you until next time